question is from Healthy, Happy, and Free. Do you think someone who has suffered from an eating disorder should compete in bodybuilding? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Terrible idea. Terrible, yeah. terrible, yeah. terrible idea. I'll tell you what, um, if you don't have an eating disorder- It's like an alcoholic entering a drinking contest. Yeah. Like, it's like- definitely not a good idea. But don't you feel like this is pretty commonplace? Like a lot of people don't realize maybe that they have uh, an eating disorder, but they're like compelled to want to like present their physique on Well, stage. think about it this way. Okay. Here's a sport. And we're going to embody- when we say bodybuilding, this covers bikini, this covers uh, uh, physique competitors, this may even cover um, other types of uh, events or sports where you're presenting your, your, your physical self, maybe even pageants, okay? So here we are, we're in a sport where you're being judged almost or, or entirely based off of how you look. So that's number one. You're going on a stage and getting judged against other people and how they look. That's number two. Mm-hmm. Um, the requirements to do well in these kind of competitions are uh, extreme in their diets. They're extreme in the sense that in order for you to achieve that kind of a look, you have to, in for all intents and purposes, have a at least a twelve or fourteen week period of disordered eating. Okay, that's literally what it is. For all intents and purposes, if you look at the way people ate pre-contest, um, you most psychologists will look at it and be like, that's disordered eating. You're eating the same food every single day. You're cutting your calories super, super low. You're watching yourself in the mirror every day. You're, you're, you're weighing yourself. You're taking your body fat. You're obsessing about your body. That does not sound like an environment for somebody who just recovered from an eating disorder. Uh, eating disorder. It would feed into it. Now, here's the truth. A lot of people with disordered eating and body image issues, it attracts them. Yeah. Seems to attract them. 100%. Um, and I think it's because it gives them a, a reason and a purpose for the way that they obsess about their body. It, it makes them, it can make you feel better. Like, I'm so obsessed about my body. Let me compete and get validated. 100%. For it type and of it deal. It justifies it. Yeah, exactly. No, just, just the same way that an alcoholic that enters a drinking contest. It's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a champion drinker. I, yeah, That's I'm, crazy. I'm doing yeah. it because it's a contest, not because I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. you have a fucking problem. I'm, I'm good at this. Yeah, yeah you no. have a fucking problem and that's not a good idea. No, I, I mean, I, I think it's a, I think it's a, um, it's, it, it's a borderline dangerous place for the average person. No eating disorder. Just mm-hmm. a normal person who sees it and thinks it's a good idea. It's just, it's not a good idea for most people. It's a, and this is where, and I know there, it, there's a lot of people in our space that, you know, it's not a sport, blah, 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 because you're, there's not a ball involved and we're not scoring points, right? But absolutely, it's an extreme sport. You do extreme things that are not uh, ideal and healthy for the body like any other sport. You know, that's, that's what defines really a sport is it's not something, no sport is healthy for your body. Doing anything repetitive or at extreme levels isn't ideal for longevity and health. So it's definitely, uh, already a, uh, dangerous or extreme thing for a, a person that has got a good relationship with food. It could take somebody who has a good relationship with food and give them an eating disorder. So somebody who's already, uh, in that place, uh, or been in that place? Nah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely not a place that they should they should be in whatsoever. Um, and I don't see anything good coming out of of putting themselves through that. No, I'd say if you if you're super self aware and very secure with who you are, um, then you then you can compete, and then you might be okay. Um, otherwise, what a what a terrible. I mean, again, you are think of all the value and importance they're placing solely on how you look. There isn't even any performance component. So they don't even care how strong you are or anything like that. It's all about how you look. It's no wonder that, you know, calf implants and oil injections, which aren't even anabolic steroids, you're not even building muscle. You're just injecting oil into your muscles to make them look rounder. It's no wonder that has is permeated into uh the the sport of of bodybuilding. It's, it's all the values about how you look. I, None of it is on anything else. And when you place that, when you're already obs- body obsessed, you're, you're body obsessed to train six days a week and whatever. Then on top of it, you're going to, people are going to tell you that that's a good thing. You look great. This is, here's your money. This is what it's all about or whatever. Here's your trophy. Boy, that's a, uh, what do they call that? A, um, a, a loop, uh, 
Negative feedback? No, positive, positive feedback, feedback loop. loop. It's like putting a speaker in, in front of a microphone. You know, get that loud sound. Yeah. It's like bad, you know, you know, body obsession. Yeah. Going to enter into a sport where everybody's obsessed with body. <laughs> Boy, that'll blow it up uh, in crazy I proportions. I feel like Instagram has just perpetuated this too. Like it's... We're in we're in this time where it just seems to be extremely popular, uh, both guys and girls. If you're at all into fitness and you're into Instagram and you want to gain followers, whether it be for popularity reasons or to try and build a business, it just seems like the go-to move. Like you know, people follow people that have good physiques and they they look like they want to look, and so me getting on stage and competing and getting myself at a, a look that all these people desire is going to gain a bunch of followers and then I'm going to build a business. I'm going to make all this money. And I just think that there's a, a false perception around that that people don't don't mm -hmm. realize. I think that we're in this world. We think that, oh, someone has 50,000 followers, so they must have a, like a serious, successful business, especially when those people are presenting themselves as super successful when in reality, a lot of them really are not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.